ٹاکنگ <laughs> human rights abuses in indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir now when we talk of indian uh, indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir or the human rights abuses this is nothing new we've been talking about it but this is increasing especially when it concerns the minorities of india uh, muslims or uh, christians or even dalits this is going to be our leading story then we'll be talking about astrazeneca this is a london based uh, company that has developed the vaccine they say that their booster dose of astrazeneca is extremely efficient against the omicron uh, variety of the covid-19 virus now uh, as we know the uh, this uh, omicron uh, variant is uh, slowly and steadily creeping into every society whether it be in the west or in the east nevertheless uh, a news like this comes as a very positive development then we'll be talking about russian president vladimir putin who has said that insulting a prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam does not count as freedom of expression this was quoted by the tas news agency in which he of course criticized uh, uh, the french because of uh, charlie hebdo and the way they have criticized the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam through their publications uh, this is an extremely important point to highlight especially by leaders such as vladimir putin in the whole context of islamophobia then finally we'll be talking about bangladesh where at least 37 people have died over 70 people have been injured after a fire broke out on a passenger ferry in the sugandha river in bangladesh of course uh, uh, the efforts are still on to repatriate as many people as possible to uh, the nearby hospitals uh, it adds to the tragedies that bangladesh has been engulfed in in the last few days let's come to our first story ladies and gentlemen and that concerns the abuses the human rights abuses in indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir and when somebody even talks about those abuses he is detained by the security agencies of india the latest being khurram parvez who's a human rights uh, activist who's been detained by uh, the indian forces and a lot of hue and cries being raised by all the agencies including the united nations more in the following report India is hurtling towards abyss of darkness after constitutionalizing of exclusive policies by Hindu nationalist BJP government. The Islamophobic Indian regime is not only changing demographic makeup of Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir but also silencing a dissent by draconian anti-terror laws. Betraying international law, Indian security forces launched a killing and arrest spree to crush indigenous resistance in occupied valley. Indian government arrested an award-winning Kashmiri human rights activist Khurram Parvez for exposing its gruesome atrocities and war crimes in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. A statement published by Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights highlighted Parvez's contributions to human rights and pressed India to bring its draconian laws in line with India's international legal obligations. Pakistan's government has presented a 131-page dossier detailing a series of atrocities committed by Indian government featuring lists of violations including rape and forced disappearances and torture in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir besides trampling upon human rights in occupied valley indian state is enabling violence against minorities and low caste hindus bearing the brunt of hindu nationalism anti christian sentiment in the country is surging prompting violent attacks on churches and christian settlements the harassment of muslim worshippers is rampant after bjp's nefarious attempt to portray 200 million strong muslim minority as potentially dangerous outsiders it's high time to hold india accountable for its blemished record of human rights and civil liberties before it embarks on genocidal violence against minorities to discuss the human rights abuses in indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir and all across india and the way india is trying to silence the voices of those who are trying to highlight these abuses we've been joined by hamid khan al mashriqi he's an analyst hamid thank you very much to have joined us hamid this latest arrest by of uh, khurram parvez who's a human rights activist doesn't it sh- uh, show and continue to show the true face of where the current indian government is going and what it intends to do as far as its minorities are concerned as far as other religions inside its country is concerned yeah thank you very much umar 
I mean, this is not only showing the true face of Indian government, rather yeah. it is showing the fascist acts mm -hmm. taken by the Indian government. And these fascist acts are very uh, condemnable. And I will tell you this, Khurram Praves, he has been working on human rights atrocities uh, done by the Indian uh, army and Indian forces for over 20 years. And he has a very, uh, you know, strong and clean record of providing evidences against Indian atrocities in Kashmir. And I cannot uh, explain you how much hard work this gentleman has done for Kashmiris. And now this is the tolerance level of Indian fascist government that they cannot even tolerate a voice who is giving them just uh, showing them a real face of India. And if you look into the situation in Kashmir, it is getting worse every day. Human rights uh, violations and, and a genocide, I mean, killing Kashmiris beyond, you know, uh, extrajudicial killings. And on top of it, if, if, if you talk about this, even United Nations, uh, Twitter and, you know, Mary Lawyer and others, they have openly condemned uh, Khurram's arrest and they want, uh, uh, you know, Indian forces to release him immediately. I am surprised that uh, we have seen last year Amnesty International office was forced to close because they were uh, pointing out the violations and atrocities of Indian government against minorities, not only in Kashmir, all over in India, whether it was Delhi riots or whether it was in Assam or Nagaland. So Indian current government is, is beyond a fascist government now. Their steps are very much concerned and world needs to take some action against it. Otherwise, as you said, it is too late. It will be too late. I mean, they are going towards a genocide and they need to be accountable for their genocide. And this Modi government is, uh, is is getting out of control. And if they will keep arresting persons like Khurram, then what what is left there for human rights? There is no... I totally agree, uh, with, you know, I totally agree with you, Hamid, on that. Dr. Walid Rasul, who is a Kashmiri activist, also joins us online. Dr. Saab, thank you very much to have joined us. Dr. Saab, uh, Khurram Parvez joins a huge line of activists and uh, people uh, uh, and youth and uh, politicians and uh, Kashmiris who have tried to uh, talk the truth as far as what is happening in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. When is all of this going to end or is it ever going to end? Dr. Saab, can you hear us? I think there's some kind of a technical issue due to which Dr. Walid Rasul cannot hear us or Am I can order? see him. Dr. Saab, can you hear us? Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Yes. Are we audible to you? Did you understand the question that we asked you? Yeah, it is a, it is a decline of court rule protection of India even. Article 32 of Indian Constitution gives protection to the minorities and the human rights. And they are, uh, this is the violation of not only the international laws, but also the Indian laws itself. It is why that Indian law within the India is questioned by Indian Supreme Court judges. They say that you cannot quote Article 21 of Indian Constitution. It is an emergency. You can only invoke Article 21 when there is an emergency in India. And it, it, it seems clearly that there is an emergency in India and they have snatched any and every fundamental right which is not the derivative right as per international law. Because now J now FIR is being considered the prima facie evidence against any Kashmiri and he is being jailed. And while as jail is not the exception in these cases, so is the case of Ram Parvez. Justice Chandrachut of Indian ex Supreme. Uh, judge have raised the question upon the Indian judiciary. He says that this is the judiciary which is controlled by executive and the Mutitwa right wing. 
So, there is no space to Kashmiri people under Indian, in Indian illegal Kashmir. So, we now, need if there is no space, if there is no space, if there, Hamid Saab, if there is no space as far as the Kashmiris are concerned in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, and the saffron terrorism by the BJP led uh, government is uh, going on unabated, uh, a lot of uh, uh, things are going on without any uh, reaction whatsoever. We also saw this whole conclave of uh, the Hindu fanatics as well, uh, where they chanted that. Uh, and they decided and they talked about killing uh, yes. you know muslims and other minorities uh, where is india going and if it is going in the wrong direction what needs to be done to stop this saffron terrorism umar they are already gone too far towards the wrong direction uh, in enmity of uh, particularly muslims and minorities there that now world has to take action by putting some sanctions on uh, this government because this is a state uh, state sponsored terrorism by the british uh, by this uh, fascist uh, indian government who has responsible for all these atrocities now and uh, umar there is one thing which i want to uh, you know say to mr rasool as well that i don't have any uh, faith or any trust on indian supreme court anymore when you look into the uh, babri masjid decision when you look into the article 370a and 35a decision from supreme court supreme court has become a kangaroo court and puppet of indian fascist government there is no way that indian muslims or kashmiri muslims can trust on indian supreme court anymore and this constitution of india does not support or help kashmiris in any way it was never meant to help or support kashmiris in indian illegal occupied kashmir and since this right is and fascist government have come into power they have scrapped all the rights all the human rights of kashmiris they are treating kashmiris as their uh, colony or as their slaves so how do we kashmiris can expect any kind of justice from the supreme court now there is a, a freedom movement is going on and this freedom movement has to reach to its conclusion which is the freedom of kashmir that is the only solution for the of Kashmiris. course right to self determination and is something that has been enshrined by the united nations and under the united nations exactly. laws as well it needs to be promulgated in letter and spirit but whether it will happen is another question altogether dr walid rasul saab uh, what about the russell uh, report the judges at the russell tribunal that uh, uh, saw all the evidence pertaining to the human rights abuses in, in illegally occupied jammu and kashmir will that have any kind of impact on the current situation in the region. Uh, but sir, I was invited to the Russell's commission, but unfortunately the Bosnia and Herzegovina government didn't allow any uh, person from on the Pakistani passport. But I was I was closely affiliated with that Russell, Russell commission when uh, Dr. Chuck uh, was in Pakistan. And that is a contribution to put the pain of the Kashmiris in the international forums and this is a proper direction that the relevant forums are now considering the gross human rights violations carried by India and the Russell Commission was one of Russell Tribunal was one of that the the uh, the uh, contribution made by Dr. Fai and his team secondly they provided the Prima Asia uh, prima facie evidences and presently the Kashmiri people came and they spoke themselves what is being happened in the Kashmir. And thirdly, they provided the primary data powered by the relevant uh, cavaters who are personally suffering in Indian occupied Kashmir. It is why that the judges of Russell Commission have given a statement that there is an heinous crime carried by Indian occupational forces in the Kashmir. And they also quoted those two reports which are ratified by the Human Rights, uh, Human Rights Commission, UN Human Rights Commission. And I think that this is the time when various INGOs who are, uh, who are uh, uh, concerned with the human rights issues they are making their efforts to put those atrocities on the international radar 
where they can be seen and dealt with and i think that international community is feeling the heat that the democracy of india is not working and it is why that when they when american is recently called the democratic nation is to debate in us pakistan denied and right. now bangladesh is also witnessing the heat from america when some cavaters are giving the bad name to bangladesh even and they have been put in the trouble so right. i think uh, hamid and, hamid khan mashriki uh, let's so come hamid, to you and let's talk about the efficacy of commissions such as the russell commission or even the united nations human rights uh, commission whose report has come twice as far as indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir is concerned these reports these judgments do they validate the actual situation in the region and beyond as far as muslims are concerned and secondly if they do validate it how can all of this validation be translated into some form of action uh um there is two ways one that your it is responsibility of uh, amnesty international organization or, or organizations like that then european union and other uh, you know uh, western world uh, countries that they should take the immediate action against uh, you know indian government and they should consider the dossier provided by the pakistani government which is based on every uh, facts and evidence so this is now not only i mean pakistan other countries has to come forward to bring the case against india uh, into the european union and others because there is only one way to stop indian atrocities and that is to put some sanctions on it put some bans on it i would like to remind that the way uh, modi was banned as a, from uh, entering in america prior to being a prime minister of uh, india because he was considered as the butcher of gujarat since then have so things now changed since the since the time that he was banned from entering us and now he is allowed to address uh, the 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 us parliament inside of us at the same area in the same area where he was banned from entering exactly. have exactly. things changed that is, that is the hypocrisy of the american and western world which needs to be exposed all right but in this whole exposure you you, you talk about exposure of uh, this duplicity or hypocrisy of the west dr walid rasool this hypocrisy is still going on with what we see that is happening in indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir and even beyond the way the minorities are being treated let's talk first of the muslims and then we'll go even beyond uh, when they are not allowed a in an illegally occupied jammu and kashmir to exercise their due right of self determination uh, or uh, even beyond india to not even say their prayers correctly for example gurgaon exactly. uh, and uh, the fact that now it is prohibited to uh, say your prayers in open places as is, it causes a security concern where is a country uh, known as india going is it going towards a khand bharat as they talk about and can it now be called a democracy actually but so uh, we have a recently series of meetings with the oic eight member delegation followed by some delegation of, of the oic countries and also the foreign minister of the malaysia they all think that now it is the time that we should look beyond p5 there is a there are the nations who have there is a big big size of the nations who are beyond the p5 so the understanding is the all right i'll ask the same question to you hamid sab what is your point of view on where things are going the way muslims are being treated before i go to christians and dalits let's talk about the muslim community when in gurgaon they are not allowed to say their prayers in open spaces they say it, uh, the indian say it causes a security concern where in indian illegally occupied jammu and kashmir the atrocities continue unabated and those who try to voice their opinion on what is happening are put under detention what needs to be done and uh, if there is a hypocrisy as you yourself have pointed out who should we turn towards uh umar interesting thing i can tell you that this gurgaon incident uh, you know we, the way they have stopped uh, muslims praying openly in the grounds when the six gurdwaras offered them to pray inside the gurdwaras for friday the hindu fascist political and uh, uh, rss uh, uh, you know politicians they stopped uh, six to offer those services to the muslims for the gurdwaras so it is it is the height of 
uh, humiliation for the Muslims and is a height of, uh, you know, uh, it is height of putting them to the wall. Now the option is only one, and that is the unity in the Muslim world. The the one uh, or and I always say that it is the time to make a kind of a group of G8 or something of Muslim countries where powerful, influential Muslim countries come together for the uh, solutions of the Muslim world problems and the solution of Kashmir and Palestine and issues like that. Now, OIC, we have to think beyond OIC and with the help of OIC. Both ways, Muslim world has to come together and take action against them economically and show them that, that the, now the, it is the time that Muslim world has determined to uh, be strong against the atrocities of Indian forces. Because if we will keep looking at Europe, Europe and America, we have seen their hypocrisy. We have seen America's hypocrisy in the last 20 years. So we cannot have much more hope from America and European Union unless we will make our own strong uh, Muslim allies group. That is the need of the hour, that we need to make a group of type of G8, which can consist of Indonesia, Turkey, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Pakistan, Miss Egypt. So these countries, if they make a G8 type organization parallel to the world G8, then they can be more influential to the world because we have seen that OIC could not perform so many duties. So there is a need of a group of a potential influential Muslim countries to be able to influence on India and Europe all and right, America. All right. I think all right. Dr. Walid Rasool, when it comes, I mean, we, uh, we, we were interrupted when you were answering the question, the same question that I asked Hamid Khan Saab about uh, the role of the OIC and uh, excluding the P5 because the role has their role as far as highlighting or taking some kind of action on the atrocities in illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir or the atrocities on Muslims is really not, uh, cannot be described in any form of action. There have been state there have been resolutions, but no action has been taken. As Hamid Saab points out, there needs to be a subgroup formed of the OIC that should take care of these issues happening in IIO, JK or uh, on, to Muslims inside uh, India. Do you feel that is possible, tangible? It is the same question which I, you have asked it to me. Yes. I requested to the Honorable Foreign Ministers that have you any proposal to enter an arrangement like that of NATO or Warsaw? So we are expecting that this is not now the problem of the Pakistan only. The global Muslim world has the so many problems and they are understanding that there are the hypocrisies and they are not tackled on the equal terms what United Nations gives the right to every nation. Number one. Number two, when you say that we are sensitive to human rights, a top official, I will not name the Manisha, he told me despite we have the palm oil trade with India, but still we comes, consider that the human lives are the precious and we give weightage to the human life who is being killed and, and uh, he is being killed under Indian occupation. So this was the oxygen, this was the breathing space. If this number is being added, I requested uh, various uh, covaters who are policy drivers and the policy makers. I requested them that if our number in UNGA was four, it should be, it should go to eight and then 12. And same, if you have to move a resolution, we moved a resolution in 1984 and five members promised us our support. Then our one of the, our neighbors denied at the last hour. So we have to get our resolution back. And same when I put the question to the Saudi ambassador, Saudi uh, official, that can you support like you have supported uh, the Gambia and they pushed a resolution against Rohingya. And the same is the module you can help to the Pakistan to support the dossier, which is having the enough evidences and also it is carried on the internally and externally validated data from the primary resources of the Indian occupied Kashmir. It is an official document of the government of Pakistan being the legal party to the dispute. You must support it. 
So I All right. hope because you know that when we are uh, speaking truth to the hegemon, that is a regional hegemon, and she, her policy is driven by in Arth Shastras, Sam, Dam, Dant, and Bed. They are applying total their foreign policy doctrine by Ajit Jewel on the basis of classic realism. So we have to be very cautious. Our people who are the true, who are the true, reflect, ref, who are truly reflecting the policy of the government of the Pakistan, they are working on it and they are seriously working on it. That how we can garner the support of our allies and also the international community. What are the routes and the spaces available? We must avail them all and overall. The the person like the Puram, who was my who is my close friend, when he provided the evidences based data, it irritated the Indian government. He is not directly involved with any freedom movement or the resistance struggle, but just a human rights activist. And you mm -hmm. can understand, Batsab, the frustration of the India. Now they are squeezing the space. Even anybody writes the truth and places that, that truth in the international arena and they want to stitch his lips. It won't work. I will, oh, I will say you, Mr. Batsab, that mm -hmm. when the regime had failed her all, all the, what the shortages she has, she had taken in the Indian occupied Kashmir. Now he, she is having the only one constituency. That is her might and the armed forces equated by NIA rules. Otherwise she has lost to the Kashmir. And same right. is said by a great author, even Alama Iqbal, you cannot rule on, you, on the hearts of the public, but you can you can rule on them by a hard power so All this right. is our situation so definitely right. when we are under the indian regime they have mm. hard power muscles and they are misusing the peace uh, interpretation of the peace internationally they are misusing the democracy and that mm. is the point now taken by not it is why that i was quoting you the indian jd all right These all right, all right. All right. Hamid saab, Hamid saab, let's, let's let let let's come towards uh, pakistan's efforts whether it be through the dossier whether it be through the other uh, uh, forms of informing the world or the organizations that matter as far as uh, these human rights abuses by India is concerned. And this is not just relegated to uh, Muslims or the Muslims in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir or in India. It is also uh, extended to the other minorities within India, whether it be the Christian community or the Dalits, whether it be the Love Jihad whole campaign that they have uh, come out with, or whether it be uh, the, 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 you know, making the Christians uh, and the Christian community in India so afraid of them that they can't even, you know, celebrate Christmas. That that is being held tomorrow. They are closing their churches uh, and they are cancelling all kinds of celebrations of Christmas. Uh, when we see uh, such a situation in a country that calls itself the world's largest democracy, uh, what in your point of view is the ultimate solution, whether it be coming through the West or whether it be coming through countries such as Pakistan or the Muslim countries across the world or whether it be coming through SARC? Uh, Umar, two things. One, I don't think so that SARC is any more effective in terms of, uh, you know, giving any dictation or any, uh, you know, control over Indian uh, policies. But, I mean, this is the time when world needs to understand that it is Indian government is not, uh, you know, even a democratic government. It is a right fascist government, which is taking, the ac taking actions against all the minorities. And I mean, uh, if, if you're talking about Christians and what they did in Kerala, in the churches and everywhere, I mean, it is a, it has been reported all over Western world as well. But what happened is that when it comes to the economical benefits of the mutual benefits of the world, the, the modern world has closed their eyes, but they should not close their eyes and they will not be able to close their eyes for longer period because now the time is passing so quickly that there will be so many internal voices from India. And I always say that this, uh, whatever Modi is doing, the entire Indian nation is going to pay the price for that in terms of 
uh, India divided into many states because of their own policies. India is not a secular country anymore. India is run by a fascist ideology who is just believe in Hindutva supremacy in the India, which is not possible in the country who has over 30% minorities, which means over 300 billion people are non-Hindus. And then if we add Dalits and others, it became over 700 billion people. So it is not possible for Indian Hindu ideology to control everything. Rather, they will... I agree with you. I agree with you, Hamid Khan al Mashriki Saab. And I think that something needs to happen in form of some kind of action or uh, sanctions on India so that they understand that whichever direction they are taking their country to, whether it be for political gains or other gains, is going to create havoc and going to implode their country in many pieces if this continues in the same vein. It is really time that India understood what democracy meant and what were the real principles of democracy. Before we end, of course, it's the last day of the week. I'd like to again point out the importance of Islamophobia, as has been highlighted by Russia, Vladimir Putin as well. And of course, uh, the, the other issues that we talked about, whether it be uh, what happened in Bangladesh or uh, the AstraZeneca and uh, COVID-19. We will end it, but I'd like to thank both of my guests, Dr. Varlid Rasul Saab, the Kashmiri activist, and my dear friend who has come many uh, times to our show and has highlighted the plight of the Kashmiri people. And of course, Hamid Khan al Mushriki Saab, analyst, to have joined us as well, to have talked to us about this very, very important issue that uh, pertains to our subcontinent, that pertains to the Muslims of the world and the subcontinent. High time, some action is taken. We wish you a great weekend. It's also Christmas tomorrow. So to all of those who are celebrating Merry Christmas, please get yourself vaccinated. If you haven't already, Omicron is, uh, is, is slowly and steadily gaining its ground. So we need to get vaccinated and follow the SOPs and also take care of ourselves. Have a great weekend. Allah Hafiz.